The Supreme Court dismissed curative petition of sole death row convict Yaqub Abdul Razak Memon in 1993 Mumbai serial blast case, paving the way for his hanging on 30th July. A Tata court in Mumbai had issued a death warrant against him. As per the warrant, Memon will be hanged to death on 30th of this month in the Nagpur Central Jail. Yaqub was sentenced to death on charges of criminal conspiracy under Section 120B of the Indian Penal Code by the Tada Court in 2007. Subsequently, his appeals were rejected by the Bombay High Court and the Supreme Court. President Pranam Mukherjee had also rejected Memon's mercy plea. Disruptions marred the proceedings in Rajya Sabha on the first day of the monsoon session today with the opposition Congress adamant on External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj's resignation over the Lalit Modi controversy and BJP accusing it of running away from a debate on it. Meanwhile, even as the Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman PJ Kurian allowed a discussion, the House could not function and was finally adjourned for the day due to opposition uproar. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj today said she is ready for a debate on the Lalit Modi issue. In a tweet, the External Affairs Minister said, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has informed the House regarding the same and the party is looking forward to the opposition response. On the start of the monsoon session of Parliament, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed hope that the monsoon session of Parliament will be fruitful and that promises made by some political parties during the last session to allow work on priority will be kept. Lok Sabha was adjourned for the day after paying tributes to departed leaders. Special Court has summoned ex-Minister of State for Coal, Santosh Bagrodia, as accused in a coal scam case. The court also summoned ex-Coal Secretary H.C. Gupta and retired public servant L.S. Janoti as accused in the case. The Income Tax Department has launched e-filing link on its official website for declaring illegal foreign assets and black money using the one-time compliance window notified recently by the government. The declaration filed online by an individual or an entity will have to mandatorily bear a digital signature for validation. The new development bank floated by the BRICS nations, including India, has formally started its operations. Chinese Finance Minister Lu Jibei, Shanghai Mayor Yang Ryong and the bank's president K.V. Kamath attended the opening ceremony in Shanghai. Gold stabilized on Tuesday, holding just above a five-year low, but with investors still clinging to views of further price falls a day after the metal lost 4%. Falling for the second day, gold prices declined by 85 rupees to 24,949 rupees per 10 grams due to speculative selling after weak global queues. NASA has captured the first image of the sunlit side of the Earth from a distance of 1.6 million kilometers, which prompted US President Barack Obama to tweet about the need to protect the only planet we have. Burundian President Pierre Gurunziza is standing for a third consecutive term in elections that have been denounced by his opponents as unconstitutional. The opposition says the president is only entitled to stand for two terms. Public anger over his bid for a third term provoked violent protests in April and a failed coup attempt in May. At least four people were killed and eight others injured when a car bomb exploded near a mosque in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. Chinese military has expressed its opposition to frequent surveillance by US military ships and aircraft over the disputed South China Sea, saying it is harming bilateral mutual trust and the country's security interests. The comments came after the top US Navy admiral joined the seven-hour-long surveillance flight over the South China Sea over the weekend. Chaired by FIFA President Blatter, the executive committee pushed for a range of important reforms to be submitted for decision to the upcoming extraordinary congress underlining fifa's commitment to better governance and greater accountability they also decided that this congress will take place in zurich on 26 february 2016 when a new fifa president will be elected brazilian soccer legend pele left the hospital yesterday after undergoing back surgery, the latest in a series of health complications for the 74-year-old former star striker. This is the third time Pele has been hospitalized since November. BCCI has announced the venues for the World T20 to be held in India in 2016. Bengaluru, Chennai, Dharamshala, Mohali, Mumbai, Nagpur and New Delhi will be the venues along with Kolkata which will also host the final of the event.